back in the day before electronics became so disposable and easy to replace like everything is pretty much nowadays, you might have been more inclined to go down to your local repair shop or, you know, some other similar type of uh, outlet and, you know, get your stuff checked or repaired if needed. And in the case of uh, telephones, like the house phones, maybe you went down to your nearest radio shack and they might have had a telephone tester like this one here. And, you know, this would have been like back uh, before the days when you would walk into a radio shack and the first thing they'd offer you is a brand new cell phone or an upgrade. You know, they might actually try to help you in figuring out what was wrong with your phone, your your house phone. So I got this uh, telephone tester here that I've, I've had this thing for years. I It was going to get chucked and I, I saved it from its uh, trashy death. But anyways, so I've never really done much with it. I've just kind of like had it sitting around and I thought maybe today we could actually take a look at it. Maybe try to demo it and then tear it down and see what's inside. It's uh, pretty much everything is like, you know, step by step up here. It's got all the instructions on what to do. Over here on this side, it's got a cord test uh, jack, so you can plug in like your the handset cord here, or a line cord, and then it's got two other test jacks here. One for the phone, I, that's where you would like plug in your phone directly, and then it's got an auxiliary jack here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means. I think I might explain it on here somewhere, but you know maybe that was like for an answering machine or something. I'm not I'm not sure. I'll have to look through this. So if we uh, zoom in here a bit, we can see right there where it tells you you know like starting instructions about turning it on pushing power and stuff and it's also got a display right here in the kind of like towards the middle and then two LEDs for pass and fail so you know it's got all these instructions or steps all the way down to seven and then it's got answering device test right there at the bottom and then all along the bottom here there's a bunch of LEDs and I'm guessing each one corresponds to each one of those uh, buttons down there on the bottom And then right here off to the bottom right we have our our power switch and then we've got two outlets down on the bottom right corner and as we can see it's a Radio Shack telephone tester not much to look at on the back side here we just got a bunch of screws that hold this uh, back lid in place and then our label down here on the bottom that says uh, Radio Shack telephone tester the power and serial number there, and then the model is 43-114. No user serviceable parts, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if we turn it to the bottom here, we've got our four little feet there. And you might be able to see them if I zoomed out a bit there. So we just got four feet. We got some screws that are probably just holding stuff inside. Um, actually, these two right here looks like they're going to the back lid, so we're probably going to have to remove those. And then a fuse. So it tells you right there for that fuse to replace it with a Type 3 AG slow blow. And to remove this fuse here, you just press on that little tab there. And this actually, the whole thing just kind of pops out. And then you're able to just uh, pull it right out. So that's the fuse holder. So as I said, I've never actually messed with this, so I don't even know if it works or not. But um, I got a phone line here we can test it with. I got a phone. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a like a corded handset to test the uh, the handset function here. But we can test the line cord, which would be this. And this looks like it's actually a four conductor, so this test, you know, should be able to tell us uh, something about about that cord there. And uh, I'm gonna plug this in as well because uh, we need to have power to the base here I believe. Yeah we do need to have power to the base. So let's see. So it says to start we push power on and that kind of flashed there for a, for a brief little second there. And then it says to push the long loop button. So this is the long loop button down here. Um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to stay on or not. Like it doesn't even come on when I push it. Like I said I don't even know if this thing works. So okay let's see so we're gonna do the cord test right here it says to unplug wires from the phone sure already did plug in both ends of either handset or line cord into the test jack so we're gonna do the line cord there all right and in. there you go okay now it says to push the cord test button so we're gonna push this button here and it's supposed to display two or four wires in the cord and if it's the pass light turns on then that means our cord is fine 
and if it lights up fail then that means that there's something wrong with this so let's push core test and <laughs> so it lit, it lit up for oh okay okay i see you're supposed to push it and then let it go okay so first it lit up fail when i pushed it but then after i let it go it says four and then it says pass so okay so i guess that's fine all right so we passed our line cord test we're going to remove this and now we're going to do a loop test. It says reconnect wires to the phone. Plug in phone to telephone test jacks. Okay. So we're going to plug this into our base. All right. And then we are going to plug this one into the test jack. Okay. It says loop test push push buttons so we're gonna push the second button in and it says I guess okay we're supposed to pick up the handset well I mean it's cordless so whatever we'll just push the the button here so let's do loop test and let's see do I hear anything oh I guess it's just supposed to uh, turn on the pass light okay so that passed gonna hang up fail light on proceed okay so all right so that's what happens so when you turn it on or when you pick up the handset the pass light comes on when you hang back up it goes back to fail and that's what it's supposed to do so apparently our phone is still working properly all right let's go to the next test the dial test we're going to pick up the handset uh, off the hook and then we're going to press the dial button here okay so now what are we supposed to do dial each number and check the display so when we dial a number here it's supposed to show up on the display so let's see so that's one let's push two three four five six seven eight nine zero well ten back to one let's push random five there random seven so that's uh, working properly so okay so, and that's what it's supposed to do it's supposed to show us each number okay let's see uh if using tone phone the asterisk here displays 11 and okay so that works pound displays 12. so yep yeah, that's working properly and we didn't get a fail there so we're doing good so far and let's see okay and it says right here, if display shows the wrong number or no number or fail light on, unit needs service. So I'm not sure if that means the phone needs service or if this thing needs service. But either way, we're so we're doing so far so good. All right, moving on. Let's try your transmit test. Okay, so for this, we are going to push the the transmit button, and we're supposed to speak into the handset. So let's go off hook here, and the pass light is supposed to flicker when we're talking so let's see what happens testing testing we're checking the speak function the transmit and our green light is flashing so that means that it's working and so so far so good let's hang up and we're going to do the receive test and it says we push the receive button and we're supposed to listen for a dial tone on the handset so i'm going to put this up to the microphone and if we hear the dial tone, then that means we're doing good and our phone is working just fine. If there's no dial tone, then the unit needs service. So let's push the, okay, we're gonna take the handset off the hook. So we're gonna push the talk button and then we're gonna push receive. And, and there is a dial tone. I guess it just uh, only does it for a sec there. Let me do it again. Actually, you can hear it. Oh, here, actually, let's put it on speakerphone. There we go. So that is working. Let's uh, hang up here. So we're doing good so far there. Okay, so six, the short loop setup. Oh, that, I guess that's only if you want to like test only a few things. So we're going to skip that. Uh, let's do the ring test. So we're going to hang up. It doesn't need to be on the base, but I'm just taking it there for convenience. And push the high ring button which is this one right here, and the phone should ring. And that's working. So let's do the uh, low ring now. 
I don't think it's going to make a difference on this phone, but I guess that's for like if you have a like one of the one of the old school like ringer phones with the actual like magnetic uh, ringer. It could do like a low ring and a, a soft ring. Obviously, this one doesn't do this because as soon as it detects the incoming call or whatever, it'll it'll just do the the high ring and it keeps saying incoming call right here because it keeps trying to ring. So okay, so. Our phone passed all the tests, so I believed in you, phone. All right, so the machine is uh, obviously still operational, <laughs> so we can use this to test phones if we need to. And uh, not that I ever really need to. We don't even use a house phone anymore. This thing's been stored in a box in a closet for past several years. All we use nowadays is cell phones. So, well, uh, this thing passed all the tests. Now let's uh, open it up and see what makes it tick. Okay, I removed all the screws from the back and the ones from the bottom, and then just one little thing here that I noticed is that all the screws on the back of the unit uh, had a washer on it, but the two on the bottom don't. So, not that that really means much of anything, it's just a little note there. But, so now this lid will just uh, come right off, and there's a lot of empty space in this thing. So it's just like a big box. We've got our transformer here on the bottom for power transformer and then that's our obviously our control board with everything on it we see what can we see let's see um there's not it doesn't look like it's super like dense or anything we have a some sort of a chip right here i don't know what exactly that's going to be probably maybe a microcontroller source you got a few other little things down here um there's our all of our jacks right there on the front and that plugs in to the top here via a connector so that should just come right off yeah there we go so looks like the board is relatively easy to take off there's uh, some wires uh, soldered down here on the bottom so that's uh, for all the power supply stuff so yeah it looks like the board shouldn't be that difficult to remove got some screws there so let's take it out and see what's on the other side. Well, before we take it completely out there, let's uh, see what else on the bottom there. We see the wiring going to the uh, fuse holder there via a spade connector. And then we have our switch down there at the bottom. So it doesn't look like they put very much uh, protection as far as insulation goes on a lot of this stuff. It's mostly out, pretty much like out in the open. There's a like a little bit of an insulator on that one there but that's about it so and then we've got our ground down here to the case and it's got one of those uh locking washers there mm, let's see we, the the jacks we see that the phone ones only have the two going to each one of those and then our cable test jacks here we see the cables running all the way to this side right there that looks like maybe it's uh in the center there maybe those are a bunch of like resistors or something just to uh, prevent any like shorts or anything or if something's like well I mean obviously you're testing sort of for for shorts on these so I guess that's uh I don't know we'll find out when we look at the other side of the board and we see this right here it looks like maybe grounds of sorts got some kind of thick traces there there's a screw down there at the bottom that's probably seen better days it looks a little tarnished and uh, there's a rubber pad on the inside right there on the bottom not entirely sure what that's doing I don't know if that's being used to uh, kind of hold the board in place or what more of this of what looks like a like a ground and traces that aren't completely filled in so on all that yep let's uh, see if we can remove this okay so there was a total of five screws holding this board in now, looks like it should be pretty pretty loose there. Oh, there's a ribbon cable that I'm going to have to be careful with. And it goes to the, it's like a little membrane switches to the front there for those uh, buttons on the bottom. And that is the opposite side of the board, but I'm going to have to flip it down here so that we can get a, a better look at it. So let me reposition all this stuff and we'll get back. Okay, here we are. So that there, this ribbon here, goes to those uh, membrane buttons up on the top there. There's no need to take that apart because I kind of already know what membrane switches look like. 
nothing really complicated. And here is the board itself. So right here on the bottom, well technically, yeah, this would be like the, the bottom right if we're looking at it from the front side. We have a couple big electrolytics here, uh, 350 volt. Okay, so this is probably gonna have to do with something with like the, the ringer generator and stuff like that. That's probably why they're so high and 100 microfarad. Uh, right here, it looks like we've got a couple of transistors. This here says Q18. So it's upside down there, but it says uh, Q18, so that there looks like transistor. Uh, what else we got? We've got it's a big couple of power resistors there, another transistor. So I don't know, maybe these are uh, voltage regulation or something, because we've got the power coming in right here from the transformer. And uh, down here towards the, what would be the bottom right of the, did I say bottom left or bottom right over here? I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways, this would be the bottom right of looking at it from the front. We see we've got a few more transistors there, uh, tip 30. We've got this other 250 volt, 6.8 microfarad cap right there, a little transformer. So this would maybe be for like coupling the, the phone line there, the, got another little relay, a uh, bunch of resistors and transistors and stuff, and then we've got a, a CD4099 right there, so we've got some logic going on there, some 4000 series logic, two 4099s, I don't know what those are off the top of my head to be honest, and that there is an SC94846, I'm guessing that's probably going to be the microcontroller of the unit. Uh, well shoot, I tried to uh, just quickly look up some information on this and I can't find anything, so I don't know, maybe this is like some really <laughs> custom part number or whatever that, you know, specifically made for this thing. And right here it's uh, running off of a, a color burst crystal, so this would have been like the type you saw on a older a CRT TV, like here in the States. And uh, a lot of phone stuff I, I noticed that tends to use like that, that particular frequency as well. I'm not entirely sure why, I'm not an expert on like telephone systems or anything like that. I just, it's just some stuff I've noticed over the years. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I found nothing on that. So what else have we got? Let's see. SSI 202P. Don't know what the heck that is. And uh, right here we see, upside down of course. Oh wow, Tandy Corporation, copyright 1985. So this uh, unit is is pretty old, if that's uh, about the time when it was built. Uh, CD4511, uh, another 4099 there. There's, there's our red and green LEDs and our little seven segment display there. They've actually put the display on a on a socket and wow that does not come out thought maybe it would actually be easy to pop out but i guess not huh it's actually it's really tight in there and i don't want to pry it too much but yeah seven seg two two digit seven segment display there and uh a bunch of resistors down here i think oh so yeah i was right so bunch of resistors right there going from the from that connector we saw all those traces that kind of ran along and uh, if we would focus right there to that big bank, bank of resistors and LM339 comparator we've got a couple of pots right here so those are probably having something to do with with that right there uh, another transistor here and uh, I love the isolation they used on that. Look at that piece of tape covering those resistors and stuff to isolate that tab from everything else. High tech. And those are all of our LEDs right there that ran along the bottom for each of the buttons. After taking a better look at this, it looks like the, those two capacitors that are the high voltage ones that we saw on the opposite side, they are being used as part of the the ringer generator. We've got two wires, or actually three, coming from this side of the transformer and looks like that's going to be the maybe the center tap there or maybe not. I guess, I guess that was a white one. But anyway, 
Uh, all this right here kind of goes into this section of the board and that's where that little transformer was and I'm pretty sure that's used as a like a coupler for the for the phone there. The way that the ringers on phone lines uh, work as far as I understand it is normally the phone sitting like at about 48 volts I believe it's DC and then when the ringer or when it's uh, gonna make your phone ring it spikes up to a higher voltage and and it it's alternating so that's what makes the the phone pick up that that ring signal and in the case of older phones that used to have the magnetic ringers that's what would make the the co the it used to have like they had two coils so basically once it starts alternating the little sort of like plunger weight in the middle pendulum whatever it would start oscillating and then they would start hitting the bell and that's what would you know ring the bell and all this other stuff right here just looks like a low voltage stuff it it goes through a couple of diodes right there and then we've had some some capacitors and then yeah these two transistors they, they do look like they're just being used as like voltage regulators all right and that pretty much concludes a look at the inside of and a demo of this uh, old Radio Shack telephone tester. Uh, I hope that was at least uh, somewhat interesting and I kind of hope you guys stick around because I have something that I want to do a demo and tear down on that I think is actually very interesting as well and it also has something to do with telephone equipment. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around the bench.